So first, the light should influence those who are where? Yeah. In the house. Before we will be successful in bringing the light to those out of the house, we must first shine the light where? Yeah. In the house. First clean up within the cup, and then you can clean up without. What sense would it make to go out and try to clean up the Baptist church and the Pentecostal church and the Methodist church and all the filthiness is in our own church? Starting in our own homes, in our own hearts. It would make sense to start first where? Within. First take the beam out of what? Our own eye. Then you can maybe be able to help somebody to take the moat out of someone else's eye. Jesus was trying to teach you will only be successful in helping others when you are first humble enough to let God first help what? Me. Oh, how selfish that is, right? You ever been on an airplane before? And on an the airplane, they will say, just before you start, that in case the cabin loses pressure, something's going to drop from the ceiling. You know what they're going to say is going to drop from the ceiling? A mask. What type of mask? Oxygen. You know what they say? They say you must first put on, if you're an adult, whoever, first put on what? Your own mask before assisting others. So that if a mother was up there and the mask came down, she shouldn't just put the mask on her child first. You know what she should do? Oh, how selfish that mother is, right? Why? It equips her with the ability to help. See, if that child... It has the oxygen, is able to think and breathe and all right, they may not know what to do. Mm -hmm. But if that mature parent puts it on first, not only do they help themselves, but now the parent is in a position to help what? Uh -huh. Others. In the church, we must first, before we try to win the world and win the community, we must first get ready ourselves, not selfishly or pridefully, but that we can be in a position to better help somebody else. Does it make sense? Yeah. This is why... BTI. Now watch. The Bible says that you, you must have a light so that all can see in the house. Verse 16. Sister Kia. Continue on verse 16. Matthew 5, 16. Yes. Let your light so shine before men. Yes. Why? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Where? Which is in heaven. So when we do it right, they won't glorify us. They'll be glorifying our Father, which is what? They will say, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Now, watch what the prophet says. Evangelism, page 121. Let's read that together. What does it say? And 121, it says, we are under what? Under the obligation to declare. What's that next word? Faithfully. Why do you think it says faithfully? Could I be unfaithful with my declarations? It says we are under the obligation, the law, to declare faithfully a little bit of the counsel of God. Now, do you know who that came from? You, you, you know where that is in the Bible? You know in Acts, the Bible says that Paul said that I have not been neg negligent to declare to you the whole counsel of God. He says, I was with you three and a half years, night and day. I showed you what the word of God says. He says, but after my departure, grievous wolves will come into the church. Take the word, he says, so you understand for yourself. It says, we are not to make what? Less prominent the, give me another name for the special truths. Present truth. We are not to make less prominent the special truths that have what? Separated us from the world and made us. It is these special truths that make us what we are as seven evidence. For they are fraught with how much? Eternal, Eternal interest. God has given us what? Light. Did we read that in Matthew 5? Yes or no? God has given us light in regard to the things that are what? Now taking place in the last room of time. Do you know no other church understands this? The Baptists don't know this. The Catholic don't know this. The, the, the Methodists don't know this. The Church of God don't know this. Sad. Most of us at Seventh Heaven is don't what? No. But in mercy, God is saying revival, reformation. We can go back, pick up this light in the last room of time, understand what's taking place. And with pen and voice, we are to do what? Proclaim the truth where? To the world. Not in a what? tame spiritless way but in demonstration of the spirit and what i told you a little conversation i had last week someone told me they said listen i hear that you're confused in the church someone said i, I, I that, that in the conversation i had i, I hear that that, that, that that what's being taught shouldn't be taught the way it's being taught maybe you should tone it down you want me to tone it down no. you want me to tone it up 
Tone it up. By God's grace, I don't know any no other way. That's why we're here. <laughs> By the grace of God, now listen, it has to be toned up. Why? If we only have a few moments left, the personal trainer can't get lax and ride and relax. You know what we have to do? Press. Get ready. Help, Lord, help us. It says, and, and, and with pen and voice, what it do is not in a tame, spiritless way, but in demonstration of the what? Spirit and what else? Power of God. Watch. Evangelism 121, ne next paragraph. At this time, when we are what? So near the end. Is that true in 2020? Yes. This is the beginning of the end. Yes. It says, shall we become so like the world in what? Right. Now, I'm going to tell you something. See, maybe, maybe you say, well, I, I love him right now, but you know, we're going to have to talk more, more, more pointed. Is that all right? Is that all right? right. We got to get closer. Yeah. It's going to have to touch not just what we think, but what we believe is going to touch what we want. Practice. See, to get ready for the coming of the Lord, we got to change our practices. What we're doing now cannot prepare us to run with the what? What we've been doing right here, we can, we're not keeping it up right here. So then that means that we have to change what we're doing to, to stay up here and then be prepared for here and here. Are you following? Amen. Now watch. It says, so like the world in practice that men may look to, in vain to find God's what? Denominated people. Shall any man sell our peculiar characteristics? Shall we sell it? No. What would you call a man who sells his peculiar characteristics? I know what I call him. I call him a sellout. <laughs> An Esau. 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 Look what it says. It says that, 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 that he would have, he, we should not sell our peculiar characteristics as God's chosen people for any what advantage the world has to give. Shall the favor of those who transgress the law of God be looked upon as of what? Great value. I don't care what Babylon says. She's drunk anyway. It says, shall those whom the Lord has named his people suppose that there is any power higher than the what? Great I am. And he has put his message where? This is why Bible Training Institute, BTI. It says, shall we endeavor to what? Blot out the distinguishing points of faith that have made us what? You know what I was told? I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm just telling you. I'm just being honest with you. I was told you're not ready for this. No, there was never a charge that is not in the Bible. Because at first I was asked, show me in the Bible that what you're teaching is right. And because it's Bible Training Institute, by the grace of God, what do we do? We went to where? The Bible. Bible. And the person looked at the Bible. And they, you, cannot you cannot challenge the Bible. The Bible is clear. Well, I don't know if we're ready for this. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Well, if we're not ready, when will we be ready? We won't be ready. Now listen. Should we get mad at people? No. no. Should we fight people? No. no. Jesus didn't fight. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, but he didn't fight. He warned them of the religious leaders, but he didn't fight. He was humble. He was respectful. Now watch. It says, it is what? Too late in the day to feed with People want you to come to church and get milk. But milk will not get us ready for the time of trouble. It won't, it won't help us in the time of the horses. It won't help us. It says, if souls a month or two old where in the who are about to enter. The time of trouble such as if they cannot hear how much all of the straight truth or endure the strong meat of the straightness of the way. The question is, how will they stand in the day of battle? Impossible, my friends. And we're going to find out that that is the real issue. Somebody has to be prepared not to sit. Somebody has to be prepared to guess what? Stand. Now, it says truths that we have been years learning must be learned where? In a few months. Why? Because in 2020, we don't have long. It says, by those who now embrace the third angel's message. Now, it says, shall those whom the Lord has named his people suppose that there is any power greater than the great I am? Let's read this together. Shall we endeavor to blot out? The distinguishing points of faith that has made us. Seven, seven, seven. Should we hide what makes us who we are? Yes or no? no? No. We need to study it, understand it, and humbly be able to give an answer to every man that asks of us the reason. Now, let's go back to Daniel 12, and let's see this from the Bible. Go to Daniel 12. Let's go back to Daniel 12. Now, remember, we went over this the first time. Now, we're coming back for a second layer. We want to go a little deeper this time. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel the 12th chapter. Daniel the 12th chapter. 
Should we test them hard, Brother Bill? Should we go hard or should we go a little easy on them? No, Brother Bill said, no, we need to go hard on you. Okay, we'll go hard. All right, Brother Bill. Let's go to Daniel 12. Let's go to Daniel 12, verse 1. Let's go a little deeper now. Verse 1. Let's read that again. Would you read that for us, Sister Davis, uh, Mother Davis? Would you read that for us? Daniel 12, verse 1, please. For the children of thy what? People. So it says that Michael is going to do what? Stand up. Who is Michael? Talk to me again. Who is Michael? Now he's Jesus. Now, when he's sitting down, what's happening? What's happening when he's sitting down? He's judging. What else? He's a what? Now, when Michael stands up, what's happening? No longer judging. No longer priest. So probation is closed for how much? The entire world. Now, let's continue. Watch now. It says when that happens, there shall be, uh, uh, for the children of the people, and there shall be a time of what? trouble such as never was since there was a nation where even to that now would you read the last part the last part of the verse even to that same time what does the last part say and at that time thy people shall be what who's going to be delivered God's people God's church everyone that shall be found written where where in what book talk to me we study about these three books there were three books in the judgment. What were the three books? We went through the Bible. Book of life, book of death, book of remembrance. Which book do we have to be in to go through a time of trouble? Now, later on, we need to go back and find out how is it that our names will remain in that book. You know, it's possible to get your name in that book and in the judgment have your name taken out of the book. Blotted out. You know what? On the Day of Atonement, you know what the Jews used to say? And they still say it today. Those Orthodox, the ones who really know on the Day of Atonement, there was a most solemn phrase they would say to each other as they passed by each other. You know what they would say? May your name remain. remain in the Lamb's book of life. May your name remain. Can you imagine? You see somebody in the street and they say, oh, did you, you got everything ready? David told me it's coming tomorrow. You get everything ready. It's going to be a fast. Make sure everything's ready. And the Jew would say, may your name remain. May your name remain. With him, you know what he meant? If your name doesn't remain, you're cut off from the entire congregation, from life. That was a type. The anti-typical day of atonement, more significant. May our name what? Remain. We need to find out later on how to get that name remaining. Revelation 13 talks about it too. And it says the only ones that will not receive the mark of the beast are those whose names are in the Lamb's book of life. We'll see when both Daniel and Revelation speak of the same thing, it's very significant. Now, so the Bible says that the people are going to deliver are God's people. So the question is, what has to happen for Michael to stand up? See, Michael's waiting for something. Michael has not stood up yet because he's waiting for something. So we need to find out, and the devil understands, we need to find out what must happen for Michael to stand up. Go to Revelation. What book did I say? Revelation. We're going to Revelation chapter 6 now. Go to Revelation, last book of the Bible, chapter 6. And I want you to see what God's real purpose of all of this is. Now, we found out what does it mean for Michael to stand up. It means that judgment is over, priest no longer there, probation therefore has closed. We looked at that. All right. We talked about probation being the process of testing. We know what it means. We won't go up in that right now. Now, this says Jesus never leaves a place until his work is what? Yeah. Done. You're going to Revelation 6. Jesus never leaves a place until his work is done. I want to ask you a question. The outer court. OC. What does OC stand for? Outer, outer court. court. Did he leave the outer court at any time? Yes. No. 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 Did he leave the outer court at any time? No. How do we know he didn't leave the outer court at any time? Do you remember? There was a special time. He didn't leave out the work until uh, when he, out of court, and it typically represents the earth. The out of court, if you study the sanctuary, is where the sacrifices, the lamb died. The lamb didn't die in heaven, the lamb Jesus died where? On the, so the antitypical out of court is this earth. So when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus did not leave the earth or the out of court until his work was done. What was the last three words that Jesus said before he died on the cross? What? It, it is, finished. is finished. So Jesus Never leaves a place until his work is done or his work is what? Finished. So once he finished the work in the outer court, he left the outer court and went to the HP. What's HP stand for? Holy, holy place. place. When did he go to holy place? 31 what? AD. AD. Did he finish the work in the holy place? Yes. When did he finish the work in the holy place? October 22nd. Based on what? Daniel. Daniel. What chapter? Eight. What else? We studied this verse by verse. We looked at it verse by verse. Now, so he went, so he finished his work in the holy place. Did he leave the most holy, uh, the holy place and, until his work was finished? No. 
He didn't leave until his work was finished. He will start 31 AD. Someone said he should have left a long time ago, but he didn't leave here until his work was done. Now I want to ask you a question. Since 1844, he's been in the is he finished? No. Will he leave it right now? No. He will not leave the most holy place until his work is what? Done. Now guess who knows this? Satan. Satan. And Satan's plan is to keep Jesus from ever standing up. Satan's plan is to keep Jesus from ever leaving the most holy place. Because my brothers and sisters, when probation closes, the work is finished. Why does not Satan want Jesus to finish the work? Now you, you should be able to tell me now. Why does Satan want Jesus to remain a priest judging? Why does Satan not want Jesus to leave the most holy place? He understands something. And I want to make sure you understand what he understands. When he leaves, that's when he'll crush. If Jesus leaves the most holy place, Satan is in trouble. That's right. He's going to be annihilated. Now, let's go to Leviticus. Let's see that quickly. Go to Leviticus 16. Now, in Leviticus, the 16th chapter, Leviticus shows us the day of atonement. The whole chapter is given to his day of atonement. What was the date of the day of atonement? What was the date? The 10th day of the seventh month. We study this. Look at Leviticus 16. Leviticus is the 16th chapter. Now we want to go to the end of the day of atonement. It starts off in Leviticus 16 with the beginning. Let's go to the end of the day of atonement in verse 20. Leviticus 16 verse 20. Let's see why the devil doesn't want the end of the day of atonement. Look at what happens at the end of the day of atonement. Leviticus 16. Let's start in verse 29 first. Let's start in verse 29. Would you read that for us, Sister Chanel? Leviticus 16 and verse 29. Would you read that for us, please? In what month? In the what? Seven. Now remember, God finishes everything in sevens. Don't forget this now. It says, in the what month? Talk to me. In the what? Seven. It says, in the seventh month, in what day of the month? On the tenth day. So in the tenth day of the seventh month, continue. Wait, 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 wait. Back up, back up. Go to verse 29, uh, uh, verse 30, excuse me, verse 30. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement. So the priest on that day makes an atonement, so it's called the day of atonement. atonement. Now, I want you to jump down back to verse 20. Now let's look at what happens at the end of the day. Why does the devil not want the day of atonement to come to an end? Verse 20. What does it say in verse 20? Uh, sister, no, elder, elder Smokey, would you pick up for us in verse 20, please? Now, I'm going to interrupt you. When he has made, not a beginning, but when he has made a what? Yeah. So is this the beginning of the Day of Atonement or the end of the Day of Atonement? Yeah. How do we know? Yeah. He's making an end. He's coming to the end of this day. When he shall make an end. Continue. Reconciling the holy place. That is the most holy. And the tabernacle of the congregation. That is the holy place. And the altar. Uh-huh. He shall bring the live goat. Who does the live goat represent? Satan. Satan. Good. Verse 21. Aaron Who is Aaron? The high what? Priest. That priest represents who? Jesus. Let's continue. And Aaron shall lay both his hands. Now what? Now wait a minute now. He's going to lay both his hands where? On the head. Not the tail of the live goat. No. Not the foot of the live goat. But upon the head. Why the head of the live goat? What was the very first promise that God gave to Satan? I will put what? Yeah. Enmity between thee and the woman. Between thy seed and her seed. It shall what? Bruise thy head. So the very first promise God gave to Satan was when it's all over. When Eden restores, it's going to take place after the head of the serpent or Satan is what? Bruised. What's that word bruise mean? Crushed. It started being crushed on the cross, but it didn't finish. He didn't finish that work on the cross. The work of crushing Satan's head is finished on the day of atonement and Satan knows it. Satan says if Jesus ever finishes the day of atonement, if he ever finishes the work of judgment, if I can ever stop him, he can never come out and crush my head. And if my head is not crushed, he will be able to live on. This is his game plan. I don't want to help him, do you? No. I want to make sure that what God says is going to happen is going to happen. It's going to happen. Yes. But you know God's going to use his church to make it happen. He's putting his team together. Do you see why that Satan doesn't want Jesus to come out of the most holy place? Yes or no? Yeah. If he comes out, it's what? It's over. It's over. Let's watch it now. Now, in the day of atonement, 
The literal day of atonement had two parts. How many parts? Two parts. The literal day of atonement had two parts. What are the two parts of the day of atonement? The literal day, every day, has two parts. That's why the day of atonement had two parts. Go to Exodus 28. Now, Exodus 28, the whole chapter is dealing with the garment of the priest. It talked about his mitre that said, Holy to the Lord. It talked about how his garments were made. Look at Exodus 28, and we want to begin in verse 1. Exodus 28, verse 1. Let's read that together. What does verse 1 say? It says, And take thou unto thee Aaron, who was the high priest, thy brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may what? Minister, Minister unto me where? In the priest. So in other words, he's doing the work of the priest. This is the type. Now, notice what it says. Let's jump down to verse 2 now. Verse 2 says, And thou shalt make what? Holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and what else? And for beauty. So we see that God gave a special garment because everything the priest was doing was a type of himself. Just like the lamb was a type of Jesus, how he was going to die, when he was going to die, what condition he would be in, a spotless lamb of God, so Jesus the spotless name of God, the priest had similar teachings. Something about Jesus. Notice now, but not as his work as a lamb, but teachings about his work as a what? A priest. priest. Where he judges, where he intercedes. Look at verse 34. It speaks of his garment. Exodus 28, verse 34. Let's pick up there together. Are we there, amen? Amen. Let's read that slowly. It says, A golden bell and a pomegranate a golden bell and a what? Pomegranate. So what was on the priest's garment? Talk to me. A what? A golden bell. A golden bell. And a pomegranate. A golden bell and a what? Pomegranate. Now, my question is, it repeats it again. Golden bell. Well, anytime heaven repeats something, it's because it's important. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I want to ask you a question. What was the bell for? Now, we're not studying the pomegranate. It's a whole other study. But what was the bell uh, for in that golden bell in the pomegranate? For hearing. For hearing? Yes. All right, let's look at the verse. Look at, look, next, look at the next verse. Very good. Let's go to verse 35. Let's read verse 35. It says, And it shall be upon who? Aaron. Give me another name for Aaron. The priest. the priest. To do what? To minister. Give me another name for minister. Work. As he works. So the bell and the pomegranate was to be upon the priest as he worked. Now watch. What would it do? Continue. And his sound. And his what? Sound shall, shall be heard. So as the priests worked, what could happen to the congregation that was on the out, in the outer court? What could they do? They could hear they, him. They could hear where the priest was mm -hmm. and what he was doing, doing in his work. Mm -hmm. Now, that's your question. If I took a phone and I, and I put it on a, a bell or a ring and it rung, ring, could you hear when it was getting closer and getting further away? You okay. closer, yeah. So if I took it and I and I took the bell and I took it out and I put it in here, you would hear the ring, but it would sound like what? Faint. Faint. But as the phone got closer and closer, what would happen to the volume of the ring? Loud. It would intensify. Mm. It would intensify. And you would recognize it's getting what? Close. What happens to contractions when a baby is getting ready to be born? Like when the Bible says that the, 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 the coming of the Lord is going to be like contractions when the woman in travail. What happens when she gets closer? The contractions do what? Stronger. I wonder what would happen to the storms on the earth when the Lord gets time to get ready to leave the most holy place. They would what? Get stronger. I wonder if we have had a hurricane season like we've had Never. this year. Never. I wonder if we ever ran out of names like we ran out of the names and naming the hurricanes. There was only one other time that it ever happened. It was in 2004. Since we've been keeping track of the records of hurricanes and these seasons. But listen, never like this. There's a reason. Ah, but let's see back. So the Bible says, now notice we should then know where the priest is. And from childhood, the priest, you know, every Jew was taught the first five books of the Bible. He knew everything the priest was going to do. You know, there were certain things the priest did. Now, of course, certain things he did in the holy place, certain things he did in the most holy place on the day of atonement. Mm -hmm. And they could hear, and they knew it. Okay, he's supposed to go here first. He's supposed to go to the altar then. He's supposed to touch the horns. He's supposed to do that. And then just before he ends the day, this is the last thing he does. So they knew what we're supposed to do. And they're listening for, is he there in the work? They can hear him getting further away. They can hear him getting closer. And they could know that the day of atonement was about to come to an end of time. So in the end of the type, should we understand yes or no? Yes. yes. Now, so then as we go a little further, 
Notice not only generally, but there were two specific times that they were to understand more than anything else about that priest. Look what it says. Verse 35. The Bible says in verse 35, and his sound shall be heard when he does what? Talk to me sometime. Somebody. Go when he goeth in. So first time we're to hear that priest the most is when he does what? Go in. in. Then what did it say? And when, when he, he what? Out. Out. So two times. When he goes in and when he comes out. Because if he moves, what's going to happen to the bell? He goes in, the bell sounds. You know he's moving. He comes out, what happens? The bell sounds. Now I'll ask you a question. When does he go in? That's right. But when does he go in? Oh, in the beginning. The evening. He goes in as in principle. He goes in at the beginning of the day. When does he come out? At the end of the day. So then we should know when he's beginning the day of atonement and when he is ending the day of atonement. Well, he begins the day of atonement with the judgment of the dead. And we should know. He ends the day of atonement with the judgment of the living. And we should know. And so by the grace of God, there is a bell in the type. So in the, if they knew it in the type, that means we should know it in the inside. Are we together? Yes or no? Yes. So then we know then the prophet, when, when the prophet says, when the prophet says soon, no, no, how soon it was the past the case of the living, that wasn't so in the type, so she must mean something else. And the only way to know that, we got to dig a little deeper and put it together. So now, the question is, when does what? That's the question mark. When does what? Judgment begin. The priest, when he goes in, when he comes out. Did he go in on time, yes or no? Yes. Will he come out on time? Yes. And just before Jesus comes out of the most holy place, probation does what? Closes. Close. Michael stands up. Jesus comes out. Now watch the prophet. Great controversy. Says on page 46, at the time appointed for the judgment, the close of the 2300 days in 1844 began the work of what? Yes. We flew this from the Bible. Everything the prophet says, the Bible says. Everything the Bible says, the prophet says. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, then you're almost a seven-day Adventist. Now listen. It says, Agent 4 began the word of investigation and blotting out of sins. All who have ever taken upon themselves the name of what? Christ. Christ must pass a searching scrutiny. Both the living, living and the dead, dead are to be what? Judged. We're going to that in the Bible, yes or no? Yes. All right, let's go look further. Anybody know what that is? The yes. falling What's of that? the stars. The falling of the stars. Does anybody know what day that happened? Yes. yes. When did it happen? November 12th. November what? 12. You know that was last week. You should have been, and I could have been thinking about something happening. Now watch. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Matthew 24, 29. The great star shower took place on the night of what? November, November 13th. When? 1833. Now watch now. It took place November 13th what? 1833. Now, this is very important. I gave you some homework the other day. You remember you had this book that our pioneers used to uh, put out at Haskell? It's called The Cross and Its yeah. Shadow. Yeah. Now, I gave you homework. You remember the chapter I told you to read? Uh -oh. It was called The Feast of Tyrant. Tyrant. Trumpets. Oh, the Trump. Feast of what? Trumpets. Now, look what it says. 1838, the radiant stabs in 1838. Observers are somewhat familiar with the Leonel storms. The storm that year is very intense, and the event leads to the first formulation of the origin of meteors. People had never seen anything like this. You could, you could go outside and read a newspaper at midnight. So many stars fell in every direction. From the time the sun set all the way into the day rose the next day. Never before, never after have we seen anything like this. Now listen. Frederick Douglass was a slave. He just ex-slave. He, he got his freedom. And at that time, Frederick Douglass wrote his autobiography. He wrote, he saw the stars fall in 1833. And he said... When I looked at the stars fall, I knew what it meant. That's what Doug, Frederick Douglass, a slave, an ex-slave, said he knew what he meant when he saw the stars fall. He said, and when I looked up, I knew it was a sign of the coming of the Lord, and I was ready to meet him as a friend. Amen. Now, the ex-slave would say that, which you and I be able to say. Mm -hmm. Now, watch. Do you remember when the Feast of Trumpets were to begin? Anybody know when the Feast of Trumpets were to begin? Ten days. If you go to Leviticus 23 in your homework, we studied it. We found that the day of the Feast of Trumpets happened at a particular time. Look, look at it. Let's go to Leviticus quickly. Leviticus 23. Go to Leviticus 23. This is the type. You remember we studied the Passover type and type. We studied the Feast of Tabernacles type and type. We looked at these types. Now watch now. These types have to be fulfilled not only to the event, but as to the time. Look at Leviticus 23. 
Look what the Bible says in Leviticus 23, beginning in verse 23. Leviticus 23, verse 23, the Bible says, are we there, amen? Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of what? Israel. Verse 24. Saying. What's the next part say? In the seventh month. month. I can't hear you. In the what? Seventh month. So in the Feast of Trumpets, it says here, I'm going to come back to this page. Well, I'll put it down. In the seventh month. In what month? Seventh. Seventh month. Now let's read. Let's read. Let's continue. Verse 24. In the seventh month, in what day? The first day. In the first day. Of the month. Shall be what? The Sabbath. Let's read. Continue on. Verse 24. Shall be, not the Sabbath, but shall be what? Amen. There's a difference between a Sabbath and a Sabbath. There were ceremonial Sabbaths, and then there was the weekly Sabbath. There's a difference. So it says, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of what? The morning of Trump. So before the Day of Atonement, in the type, before the Day of Atonement, there was something called the blowing of what? Trumpets. trumpets. What was the trumpet for? The trumpet was to alert them that in how many days? Ten days. That in ten days, what was going to take place? The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. It was to make them aware that the hour of judgment was going to take place. That's the time. Now, my brothers and sisters, we found that the antitype must be fulfilled in like manner, right? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. Watch this now. When did the day of atonement start? 1844. 1844. What month? October 22nd. Seven months. What month? Seven months. Seven months. Month. Month. October 22nd, 1844 was just the seven month of the 10th day in Bible time. This is why October 27th. Because the seven month, 10th day, day of atonement. Now, that's 1844. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, in Bible prophecy, a day represents a what? A year. So if 10 days before the Day of Atonement, then the Feast of Trumpets must happen 10 what? Years. 10 years before the Day of Atonement. Now, I want to ask you a question. What year do you take me back to 10 years before 1844? 1833. 10 years. Just simple math. 1844, 10 years back goes what? 18 what? 34. See, we're not trying to make it fit. We're trying to understand. Now, what happened? Now, question. Is November the beginning of the year of the time calendar as we talk about or the end of the year? The end. Now, what was getting ready to come around? After November took place, what was it leading to? Talk to me. After November, what do we come to in the next year? 1834. 1834. So that while this happened, in 1834, there was a man watching the stars fall. And he recognized it. He didn't immediately just jump up. He had this man that began to start preaching in 31. Anybody know who that man is right there? Anybody know who that man? We've been studying. Who is that man? William Miller. Miller. He had studied Daniel 8, 14, the 23rd day prophecy. He had studied the stars falling. He had studied Matthew and Revelation. And he saw that the stars falling was one of the last signs that Christ gave before the hour of judgment. judgment. And so, guess what he began to start doing? At, when 1833, he had been kind of slowly preaching from 31 and slowly doing it in houses and so forth. But when he saw the stars fall, he said, I cannot continue like this. I've got to put in everything I have. So the next year, in 1834, guess what he started doing with all of his power? Preaching. Now, what does the Bible say in Isaiah 58 verse 1? It says, lift, lift up thy voice, voice like a trumpet. So the antitypical day of, uh, of trumpets was not a literal trumpet, but according to Isaiah 58, they were lifting up their what? Voices. Voices. So that if we believe the Bible in the sanctuary, we should look for a movement after 1833 telling us of an hour of judgment to fulfill the anti-typical day of atonement. Is there a movement historically? Yes. You know there's only one movement in the world that meets this specification. You know what they were called? Adventist. Do you know that Adventist as a church was prophesied to come on the scene at the right time? Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God. In like manner, the types which relate to the one second advent must be fulfilled at the time pointed out in the symbolic service. Did the Feast of Trumpets happen on time? Yes or no? Yes. yes. They lifted their voice like a trumpet. Isaiah 58 verse 1. By this, uh, we'll come back to that. Now, listen. Question. This says, God announced the start of what? The judgment, the judgment of the day. Did God let us know when the judgment of the day will start? Yes, yes or no? Yes. That was the bell that did that. 
they knew when the Germans were going to start before it happened. They didn't wait until 1844 to find this out. From the 30s, they were preaching our judgment on time. So now question. If God announced with the bell the judgment of the dead, then God must also announce with the bell the judgment of the living. Now question. Which one is more solemn? Judgment of the dead or the judgment of the living? Which one's more solemn? More living. Yeah. The living. Now look, as the books are written open, he begins his cases with the judgment of the dead, and he goes each successive generation until he closes with the what? Living. Now if I have the bell on my garment and I'm judging the dead, I move to judge the dead, what happens? It sounds. Now what happens when I move from the judgment of the dead to the judgment of the living? What would take place? The bell would sound again. So now we need to find out what is that bell? There is no literal bell loud enough to reach from earth to heaven. It must be an antitypical bell. The bell represents what? Prophetic events. Now you want to find out when the what? National signal pass on earth is a signal that something is happening where? In the heavenly sanctuary. Now, you remember we studied the great clock of time in this church? Remember that? Now look at the word clock. Guess what it represents in the real language, in, the, in its Latin, the time clock, clock. It's the slang, uh, the ornaments there. It comes from the word in Latin, clock. Clock with what? Yeah. So the word clock actually means, guess what? Yeah. So a bell is a clock. clock. So the study of that which would teach us the great clock of time or the prophetic understanding of where Jesus is and what he's doing represents the bell on the bottom of the priest's garment showing us where the priest is and what the priest is. Yeah. Did they know in the time? Yes or no? Yes. yes. By the bell in the pomegranate. Should we know it any time? Yes or no? Yes. Evening and morning. Literal day. Beginning of the day, end of the day. Judgment begins with the dead. Judgment ends with the what? Living. Living. And then probation closes for the entire world. But there stands their quotation. None know what? Yeah. Well, if the Bible says they know, the Bible says in Romans 13, 11, and they know in the time. The nine is high time to wake out of sleep. The Bible says in Amos 3, 7, sure the Lord God does nothing but reveal his secrets to the servants of the prophets. Jesus said, I tell him before it come to pass, so that when it come to pass, you might what? Believe. Believe. First Thessalonians says, you are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. You are children of the light. You are not in darkness. That they should not take you as a surprise. So all these texts says that we can know. Why does the prophet say none know what? There is no contradiction when you understand. Judgment begins. The question is, what is the time? What is the event? Now watch what the prophet says. This is Great Controversy 594. Now this is Great Controversy 490. Let's let the prophet explain herself. Now we can't finish this today. But I want to give you this, this introduction of the finishing part. It says... Before his crucifixion, the Savior explained to his disciples that he was to be put to what? Death. Did Jesus prophesy he was going to be put to death? Yes or no? Yeah. Did he tell them he was going to be spit upon? His beard will be plucked? He showed them all the details of what was going to happen. He showed them the great clock of time. Mm -hmm. He said, look, my time is not yet. But then he said, my time has come. Now watch. It says, but the disciples were looking for temporal deliverance from what? Oh, Angels were there to impress his words on their minds. But they could not tolerate the thought that he in whom all their hope centered should suffer a what? Ignominious death. death. Terrible death. The words which they need to remember were what? Pain. And when the time of trial came, it found them how? Unprepared. Unprepared. The death of Jesus has fully destroyed their hopes as if he had not what? Oh. Did he forewarn them? Yes or no? Yeah. Did they know? No. They could have known, but they didn't. Watch. So, what does so mean? In like, in like manner. So in the prophecies of the future, prophecies, the future is open before what? Us. As plainly as it was open to the disciples by the words of what? Was it open plain to them? Yes or no? Yes. Now watch. The, what's the next word? Amen. Events connected with the what? Close of probation. And the work of preparation for the time of trouble are what? Clearly. Not foggy, but are what? Clearly, Clearly presented. Now, I want to ask you a question. What closes probation? Judgment. Judgment. Didn't we say that? Yes. So, what closes what closed probation for the dead? Judgment of the dead. What closes probation for the living? Judgment of the living. So, when he gets to the judgment of the living, that is what closes probation. After he judges the living, probation closes. 
So now the question is, did the prophet tell us we can know when probation was closed? Yes or no? Yes. Look at what it says. The what? Events, Events connected, connected with the what? The laws of probation are what? Clearly, clearly, clearly presented. presented. Does God show us when probation was closed? Yes. How? How does he show us? Now listen, we're going to study this more fully next time, but I want you to at least understand the principle. Uh, there are two ways that you can know something. Two ways to know the time. How many ways? Two ways. One way to know the time is by dates. By what? Dates. In other words, when will Jesus get into the most holy place? We could say October 22nd, 18 what? 44. 44. What is that? What is that? That's a date. That's a date. Tenth day, seven month. Date. When did Jesus die on the cross? 14th day of the first month, A.B. A Passover. That was a date. Jesus knew this by date. So you can know the time by dates, or you can know the time by something called events. Yes. By what? Events. Jesus said, when you see these things, know that it is near. Don't guess, but what? No. no. This generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. So Jesus then gave us, not on, in Matthew 24, he gave us more of what? Events. events. The thinking men have their eyes fixed on the events. Events. That's what Turkin, Peter Turkin saw. Events. He didn't fully understand that. He understood this. Now, my brothers and sisters, which one does inspiration tell us that we can know as we deal with the close of probation? The judgment of the living. Which one? Events. We're going to find out that God does not tell us the date of the judgment of the living. He does not tell us the date of the close of probation. So then we can't know the time. Is that right? No. Events. Events. We can know not only by dates, we can know by what? Events. events. So now while God did not give us the date of the judgment of the living, he did not give us the date of the close of probation, he did show to us the Events. event that would cause judgment to pass from the dead to the living. He said, when you see these things, then you would be able to know. Then look up and lift up your head for your redemption. redemption. So my question is, now, watch for a moment. For many years, this work has been in progress. Soon, what? None. None. No, 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 how soon, soon it will pass in the case of the living. What is the prophet really saying? Date. None soon none. it the will date. pass the judgment of the living, but none know date. how soon. In other words, none can tell me a what? Date. date. And when judgment will pass from the day to the living. In other words, nobody will be able to say the day and the hour. That's what Matthew 24 says. We won't be able to say the day and the hour the judgment. Somebody, if, if somebody ever says to you, in 2023, Judgment will pass from the dead to the living. Know that it is a false teacher. Mm -hmm. That's not the way we're going to know of the judgment of the living. That's not the way we're going to know of the uh, close of probation. But what God has revealed, so in the prophecies, the future is open for us as plain as it was to the disciples of Christ, the what? Events. Events. Connected with the close of what? Probation. probation. And what closes probation? Judgment. judgment. So God has given us the events that will let us know the judgment and the close of probation. Next time I'll show you many more statements and quotations. But this is the principle. It's clearly presented. So the question is, is there an event that lets us know when judgment has been to living? Because if that event has not happened, then guess what I can say in 2020 if that event has not happened in 2020? Judgment has not happened. Judgment has not happened. But when that event takes place, I will say, now I know that judgment has passed from the dead to the living. It will represent the bell moving. And when I hear that event, see that event, hear that bell, I say, the priest has moved. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes or no? Yes. Now, my question is, what is the event? Mm -hmm. Is that a good question? Yes. What does that say right there? NSL. What does that mean? National Sunday Law. Listen to me. Now, we have to study this with Bible. We're going to find out that when the National Sunday Law passes on earth, that is an event. That in the heavenly sanctuary, that judgment has passed from the dead to the living. And Jesus 
ask is now, not at the beginning of the Day of Atonement, now. When the sin law passes, you know what the believers know? What do the believers know when the sin law passes? What do the believers know when the sin law passes? He is coming to the what? End. End. Now, this is why Satan is doing everything in his possible. Watch what the prophet says. The Lord has shown me what? Clearly. Now, remember, it's clearly presented. Clearly presented. It says... The Lord showed me clearly that the image of the beast. Now, what forms the image of the beast? America forms the image of the beast when she passes a what? National Sunday law. Church and state. Now, is there anything happening in the government right now showing us of a union of church and state? Yes. Now, I, 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 want to, I want to tell you right now. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. Tell us. I can't tell them. I cannot tell them. <laughs> Time will not allow. But listen. Do you remember Amy? Yes. What was her name? Barry. 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 Now listen. Yes. Listen to me. Did you wonder why her nomination was sped through so quickly? Mm. Why did they want her in the Supreme Justice? Remember, this is not democratic or, or, or republic. We must see it in light of prophecy. We must see it in light of the Bible, the sanctuary, the plan of redemption. While all these things are coming upon the earth, we should look up and understand what it really means. Thy will, God, is in the sanctuary. Now watch. Huh. So listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know the date? Ah, let me read. Now listen. The image of the beast will be formed before probation what? Closes. So the image of the beast is an event that happens before probation closes. Why? For it, it is, is to be the great what? Test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. Now, what decides your eternal destiny? The, the judgment. judgment. May your name remain. It decides who lives in the book of life and who dies in the book of iniquity or the book of death. The ways of iniquity or sin is what? Death. Now, do you remember what probation means? Remember the word itself? Probe. probe. What is a probe? Test. Test. So the close of probation is the close of what? Testing. Test. So if I come to the final test, what happens after the final test? There's no more test. Yes. So if there's no more test, there's no more probing. If there's no more probing, there's no more probation. probation. So what brings us to the close of probation is the final test. Are you following? Yes. So it says, for it is to be the great test. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are what? Sealed. All who prove their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a what? Spirit of Sabbath will rank under the banner of the Lord, great God Jehovah, and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. When? What event is this talking about? National the National Sunday Law. Law. That decree. Now listen. The National Sunday Law, formed when, uh, by the image of the beast, comes just before the close of probation. It's when judgment passes from the dead to the living. And based on our response to the Sunday Law, it will be our final test. Mm. How we respond to the Sunday law will be our final test, and it will close our probation. probation and the judgment of the living of those who go to that test or, or pass. Now, question Who is it going to start with? Babylon? Mm -hmm. The Catholic Church? No. The Sunday churches? You know that many of those who pass the Sunday law are not bad people, but are good people. Mm -hmm. Meaning that they are sincere, they are loving. God is only good, but I'm talking about the accepting of His goodness. There are Christians. Who have never been taught. Yes. Doesn't he start with the house of God? Mm -hmm. Sister Teresa. You're not here by accident, Sister Teresa. <laughs> the Bible says, I hope you don't mind me shaking here. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 17. Now, what, next time we'll come back to this in more detail. But the, the Bible says, judgment must begin at the house of God. So when judgment passes from the dead to the living, it will not start with the Sunday churches. No. It will start with who? The Seventh uh, day Church. We're going to be tested first. So then if our test comes first, then our probation will what? Close first. So do you know that it's possible for probation to close for seven and a half minutes and still be open for the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is very significant. Now, my brothers and sisters, 
when the natural sin law passes the earth, the judgment of the living begins in the heavenly sanctuary. And guess what? This is Satan's plan. He wants no seven at Venice to know their identity by the passing of the sin law. Yeah. He wants no seven day Adventist to understand the message by the passing of the sin law. He wants no seven Adventist to be teaching this. He wants us to be riding, sitting down, talking about fairy tales and picnics, potlucks and everything else, doing everything else but understanding what this event means. Because when the sin law passes, it's too late for seven Adventists to get ready. That's right. The devil wants the church to be put to sleep until the sin law passes, and he will get anybody from the minister down to the last member or visitor to hold us in darkness until the sin law is passed. Yeah. Then when the sin law is passed, wake up! Seven Adventists, wake up! It doesn't matter. It's what? You remember a man in the Bible named Samson? Yeah. He was put to sleep on the lap of Delilah until his hair was cut and it was too late. And then when he woke up, guess what? He said, I will do like I've always done. Oh, no, no, that didn't happen. It didn't happen. The devil wants us to be like Samson. He wants us, my brothers and sisters, to be afraid of our message, our identity, our distinction, and blind it and cover it and play a fool. Until all this past, and then the youth and adults will wake up. Can you imagine a seven minutes child that's been seven minutes all his life, uh, from the time he's able to think and accept the message? And then the adult coming to church, going to prayer meeting, doing all these various things, and having no relationship with Jesus, not living according to his life, and to be shaken out at that time. What was it worth? It what should it profit a man to gain the whole world? And then what? So, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is so serious. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me. You want me to lie to you? No. You want truth? Yes. Listen to me. What does that say? 99%. Nine I put him in him. Not the candy. I'm going to let you have M&M's today. Do they still have the candy M&M's? Yeah, oh, they well, do. Well, I'm not talking about that, but this, uh, 99% of 70 80s, 70 Adventists will never be ready for the judgment of the living. Mm. That's a serious statement. Yes. That was a statement that I got in trouble for as well. <laughs> but we're at Bible Training Institute. If the Bible says, I don't care what, who doesn't say it. I don't care what anybody says. What if some did not believe? That doesn't change the Bible. We should be able to stand humbly but flat-footed on the Word of God and say, I will stand in defense of the faith that was once lived in. I'm not afraid of this message. Why would we go around the world, endanger our lives? They police came to shut down our meetings in other countries, trying to put us in prison. Why would we be afraid to lay down our life by a man talking to us? You're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. We're going to shut up. Now listen, we've got to understand this message. Yes. Our life is at stake. Mm -hmm. And I say, the blood of anyone's going to be on, on their hands if we don't let each other know what the message really is. And God, why does He tell us? Because He loves us. I'm not, I'm not preaching, I'm trying to teach you. I'm not, I'm, I'm calm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. calm, all right? I'm calm, I'm calm. I'm calm. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they say, look, you, 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 you know, I'm calm, I'm calm. Very calm. So, we found that there's a 6,000 year limit. Bible teaches God can finish everything in seven. Mm -hmm. Natural sin law must pass before that ever takes place. There are many who have not heard the testing truth for this time. Mm -hmm. That's the other churches. Mm -hmm. You know, the many churches, most of the true Christians are in the Catholic Church, and the Baptist Church, and the Methodist Church, the Pentecostal Church, churches going to church on Sunday. Most sincere Christians there that never heard this message. Mm -hmm. And the greatest devils inside the Seventh Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. But listen, someone said, well then, well then, maybe I shouldn't be a Seventh Adventist. No, 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 no. Because the greatest way to get close to Jesus is in this church. Mm -hmm. I want to be in it. It's dangerous, yes, but somebody said, well, if it's dangerous, look, is driving a car dangerous? Yes. But do you drive it? Yes. yes. Is, is working a chainsaw dangerous? Yes or no? Yes. But do you work one? Yes. Well. Is being in the center of this church dangerous? Yes. 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 But it's more dangerous not to be in it. Yes. In the hurricane, if you were ever out at sea, and there's only one boat, <laughs> don't jump out. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. Stay in the ship. Amen. Don't jump out. It's safer in there than out there. Am I right? Right. I don't care how dangerous it is in the boat. It's always more dangerous outside. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's more dangerous outside this church. Get in it, and if you get Jesus inside the church, then we're safe. Amen. 
But just being a seven day Adventist, just being in the church is not connected to Christ. We've got to get connected to Christ inside of here. It says, there are many with whom the Spirit of God is striving. The time of God's destructive judgments, that's when it said, Lost Pass, is a time of mercy for those who have had what? No, no opportunity. opportunity. So learn. when the same laws passes and judgment passes did to them, it doesn't start with the Sunday churches. They have never heard this message before, and as a result, it will still be a time of mercy for them. Yes. But now watch. Tenderly will the Lord look upon all. Them. 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 His heart of mercy is touched for who? Them. Them. His hand is still stretched out to what? Them. While at the same time. The door is what? Closed to those who would not, who would not enter. Talk to me. Seventh-day Adventists. Who would not receive the message. Not every seventh day But those who would not receive the message, when the sun laws pass, the door is going to close for that seventh-day Adventist to be able to get ready. But it's still going to be open to those who have never heard this message. And brothers and sisters, at that time, listen to me, at that time, the final shaking is going to take place in the church. Those who are not, we're going to find out that 99% of the seminary church of ministers and members are going to be shaken out. Mm -hmm. Of pastors and people, of leaders and laity, shaken out because we don't know the message and don't have an experience with Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have lost our distinctive what? I this am. is the identity crisis in the final generation. We don't know our message anymore. Now, when those who pass the Sunday law test in the seminary church, they will not be shaken out, but they will receive the what? Seal of the living God. They will pass the test, receive the seal. They will receive the Holy Spirit and the outpouring of the latter rain. These who receive the latter rain will be the team that God puts on the field to finish the work. They will give what is called the loud cry. Then millions upon all over the earth are going to hear the final distinct seven Adventist message for the first time. Messages that have been polluted down through the ages. They're going to hear it in 1844 Jews in its purity. And then what's going to happen? Is when they get a loud cry, other sheep that Jesus spoke of in John 10 that are not of this fold, them also I must what? Bring. John 10, 16, and 17. And there will be one fold and one shepherd. That means that it's going to go through every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, and everyone will make the decision. In every church, some not even going to church, atheists will hear the message and become Adventists. Many will listen all over the world. And then when everyone has made the decision, all will then be tested, all will then be judged, and then Michael can do what? Stand up. And probation closes for the entire world. Mm. The judgment of the living starts at that sunny law. Probation closes for the entire world. There's no more mercy. And then the seven last what? Place. And then Jesus comes on time. time. Amen. Now we showed you that in 2020, 6,000 years is almost here. Yes. Which means the sunny law doesn't pass in 6,000 years. The sunny law passes when? Before. Before. So if we're almost at 6,000 in 2000, uh, 2020, what does that mean? That the Sunday law is almost here. Watch, I'm close. We'll come, we'll come at this next time. God's purpose in giving the what? Third angel's angels message to the world is to prepare a people to stand. stand. Not sit, but what? Stand. So when Michael stands up, he must have a people that can stand with him. Mm -hmm. And they're going to stand with the Lamb on the Mount Zion. It says, true to him during the what? Investigation of judgment. And during the investigation of judgment, which that's right in 1844. This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our what? Uh, Publishing house, house, what else? Our schools, what else? Our sanitarium. We don't even know what this is anymore. Our hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and what else? Food 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 very food. soon we're going to need some food factories. You know the news, one of the news things said that 2020 has brought the worst world food crisis that the world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. We've been told that very soon we will have to be able to grow our own food. food. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, it says this is our what? Purpose. purpose in carrying forward how much? Every line. This is why I'm in church. Mm -hmm. To prepare our people to what? Stand. Yeah. During the investigative judgment when it passes from the dead to the living, living at the Sunday law. But guess what? This is not what's being taught from our pulpits anymore. Not being taught from our publishing house anymore. Not being taught from our institution anymore. And what does God want to do? Condemn it? No. He wants a revival and a what? Reformation. We'll come back and study this more fully. We'll come back and see this. It all means something. We'll come back and see it. We'll come back and see 99% of the church. We'll come back and show you this in detail. We'll see that Gideon has what? Three We're going to show you what that means to us in these latter days. We're going to show you what all that means. And then we're going to see the great issue so near at hand. The National Sunday Law will what? 
We are those whom God has not appointed, and he will have a pure, true, sanctified ministry prepared for the library. I'm going to show you this. But now listen. 2020 will reach a climax with the presidential uh, elections. We studied before 2020 here in this church, and we told you about 2020. Didn't we talk about 2020 before you came? Yes. Yes. But now listen. 2020, this, the election is right now this, in November. It has brought us to what is getting ready to be a climax. Brought us to what is getting ready to be a climax. Now watch now. This says, the what? Decree. We'll come back to that. I can't go through that right now. We'll come back to that. We'll, you understand what it really means. 2020 will reach a climax. We talked about this history. We'll talk, I can't, still can't talk about Amy. We, we'll come back to her. Now see, now look, look, what this, look what this is. Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett, a threat to what? Religious freedom from. Remember, image of the beast has to be formed before probation closes. Church and state will unite. Now, look at what this is called. Look what paper this came out from. Americans united for separation of church <laughs> wow, and state. But this is what's going to happen before probation closes. We're seeing it happen right now. It's going to be interesting to find out what, what, what? Ah, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. But well, you can't tell you right now. <laughs> Let's close. Now watch what this says. This says, can the United States survive the what? 2020, 2020 election. election. Now look what this says. The bonds that hold Americans together have what? Free. Free. And what happens on November 3rd may do additional damage, not what it did. You know, last time we were talking, church was going on, and people may be wondering, nothing really happened. Do you know as we were saying that, that, that at that time, they were marching on Washington. Mm -hmm. Pro saying to, to Mr. Trump, we are with you. We will contest to the last these elections. I mean, everything that can be thrown out, being thrown out right now, and you're seeing a battle being developed before I, we should be praying, Lord, have mercy upon us. Mm -hmm. yes. It says, no nation does what? Yes. And that's true, there's a limit. It was for Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. It's true for America. Mm -hmm. And ours won't be the what? Yes. This election won't be the end of the United States. And they're right. But it could be what? The, the beginning, beginning of the end. end. Now, what have we been saying 2021 before 2020 ever came? The beginning of the end. end. Of um, the end. This is it. My brothers and sisters, we're going to stop right here. Now, let me black this out before I can tip it to go on. Now, listen. Do we need to get ready? Yes. yes. Is it clear that the day of atonement is about to come to an end? Yes. When judgment passes the day of we'll come back next week by the grace of God and study this Sunday law out and figure out how it fits in. But then we're going to find out that for Christ to leave the most holy place on time, to stand up on time, there is something that has to happen inside his church. And then know if we're to happen inside his church, there's something that must happen inside of what? Yeah. Us. In our heart home, we're going to have to say like Joshua asked for me and I'm going to be honest with you. You don't want me to lie to you. There's going to be some changes that have to be made in our lives. You know that, don't you? Right. You think that the footman, at the time of the footman is getting ready to pass off, you think that we can remain the same and be ready for what's getting ready to take place? Mm -hmm. Or do you think there have to be some radical changes? Radical right. changes. I was talking to Brother Spunky this morning. Yes. One of the statements was that in the last days that those that continue to eat meat will not walk with God. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Right. We're, going to, we're going to see some serious things. and the, the key, what we need to do, is go back to the Bible and find out what are the changes. Because see, you might find out that man may say some things that God has not said, and God may say some things that man has not said. So what we're going to do at this church, we're going to build step by step so nobody has to guess. We're going to go straight to the Bible. Everything we believe, this is why we out. I mean, ah! <laughs> the, whole, the, whole, the, whole, the whole the whole purpose must be I was going to say why <laughs> well do you have your books that you're supposed to bring we're, we're reading we're, 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 we're reading. did everybody did you bring your books that we gave we gave everybody one of these great conversations great. Everybody, did everybody have theirs <laughs> wow, look at the smoke uh, no. oh, no. All right. we're, we're, we're forgiving this time that, yes I'm going to go to 448. Now, please read it. I'm going to read something to you. from This is on 447. This is chapter 36. It should be chapter 36. Scripture is a safeguard. What now, page in that book? 448. Uh, it's in, this, in this book, it's 447 beginning. 447 beginning, chapter 37. Now, 
And what inspiration tells us is that in the last day, and I'll show you next time on the screen, but it, it tells us that God is going to work with the common people. He's going to work with the what? Common, common people. people. He's going to start with the common people, just like he did with the fishermen of old, and he's going to do something. But now I want, to go, I want us to go to page 448. Let's get ready to close. 448. Look at the top of the page of 448. This is in the real book, Great Controversy. It's in the real pagination. This is not 594. The real page is 594 to 595. But in this, the books that we gave you, uh, it's in 448. Let's pick up at, after. You see where it says 2 Timothy 4.3? You see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's pick, up, let's pick up just a little bit before that where it says, but the masses. You mm -hmm. see that? Yes. Let's read that. In fact, let's go to the top of that paragraph. It says, when God sends to men warnings so important that they are represented as proclaimed by holy angels flying in the midst of heaven, talking about the three angels, he requires every person endowed with reasoning powers to heed the message. The fearful judgment pronounced against the worship of the beast and his image should lead all to a diligent study of the prophecies to learn what the mark of the beast is, how they're devoid the received. We're going, we're going to see next week also more fully the mark of the beast. But the masses of the people turn away their ears from hearing the truth and are turned to fable. Who's doing this? The masses. Does that sound like 1% or does that sound like 99%? 99%. We're going to prove that. The masses are doing this. It says, the apostle declared in 2 Timothy 4, 3 in the last days, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That time has fully come. Mm -hmm. The multitudes do not want Bible truths because it interferes with the desires of the sinful world-loving heart. Mm -hmm. Why do people not want Bible truth many times? Because they interfere. The Bible would say, no, you can't do that and have a relationship with Jesus. You can't, you can't think that and have it. And you can't think that. We'll we show you later. We'll show you later. It says, it interferes with the design of the simple world-loving heart and Satan supplies the deceptions which they love. But God will have, we'll show you just one moment, just one moment. I should just, just after, I want, I want to hear this first. It says, but God will have a people upon the earth to do what? Maintain, Maintain the Bible and the Bible only as the standard of all doctrines and the basis of all reforms. What's going to be the basis of all doctrines and reforms? The Bible. Bible. So what do we need? B-T-I. This is going to give us what? Bible, Bible. training. Now watch them. It says, the opinions of learned men, the deductions of science, the creeds or decisions of ecclesiastical councils. What is an ecclesiastical council? Like leaders. That's like, that's like a church board. You can't church board and meet and find out what's true. You can't vote on what is true. Right. Even if the whole church votes that it's not true, it wouldn't make it untrue. It says the, uh, uh, the creeds or decisions of ecclesiastical councils, as numerous and discordant as the churches which they represent, the voice of the majority. Not one nor all of these should be regarded as evidence for or against any point of religious faith. Mm -hmm. It says not even the opinions of learned men. Mm -hmm. It says thus, not before, accepting any doctrine or precept, we should demand a plain, thus saith the Lord, in his support. Amen. Before we accept anything, we say, where is that in the Bible? What you been learning at BTI? Where is the Bible? Bible. Now listen, so what is Satan's plan? I wish everyone could read and see this part here. Look at this in 448. Would you point to it together and read, read together, please? The paragraph says, let's read this together. Let's see what Satan does then. And we're going to prove this tomorrow. Uh, not, not, not tomorrow. <laughs> Next week, by God. It says, it says Satan. You see the paragraph starting with Satan? Yeah, constantly. Let's, yes, yes. Let's read that together. Satan, Satan is what? Constantly, constantly endeavoring, endeavoring to attract, to attract attention, attention to what? Man, man in, the in the place of God. God. He leads the people to look to bishops. What else? To pastors. What else? To professors of theology as their guides instead of searching the scriptures to learn their duty for themselves. Now, did I say that? No. Now, listen. It was said that I'm teaching you to look to me for the answer. Where have I ever done that? What, 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 what are we doing? Every, everything we believe, where are we going? Talk to me. Bible. You're getting more Bible here. Am I right or wrong? Right. To be able to know for yourself what the Bible teaches. That's right. You can't trust a man. I don't know who the man is. This man or any other man. You must put your faith in the word of God. Is that in the Christian position? Yes or no? Yes. Right. Now, look what it says. Then by controlling the minds of these what? Leaders. Yes. He can influence the multitude according to his will. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to tell you something. The greatest thing you can learn right now, mm -hmm. if we never would have another study here at that, you must learn to study and understand the Bible for yourself so. and not take any man's word for it. Study to show thy self. So. And workmen in need not to be ashamed. I don't care who it is. I'm not ashamed to tell you what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, humbly, we need to stand upon the defense of the word of God. Amen. Now everybody's not going to do it. Britain and Jordan are going to be shaken out because they're going to accept the teachings of churches above the teaching of the Word of God. The teachings of pastors and professors and teachers above the teaching of the Word of God. But God is going to have a people. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of that team. What do you say? Amen. That is your desire. Would you reverently deal with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, we have sensed your presence today. Our hearts are impressed with the fact that time cannot continue much longer. And that the events that are happening on earth are an indication that you as our priests are getting ready to move to the judgment of the living in heaven. And the question should be asked like the song, do you hear what I hear? The bells about to sound. But Lord, not one of us are ready for this. There has to be decided changes in every aspect of our life so that we can be ready to meet you and to know you as a friend. Radical changes. And we don't care what anyone says as long as it's in the Bible. We would have to say to ourselves, get behind me, self. I want to follow Jesus. Amen. If that is your desire to follow Jesus today and be ready to meet him in peace, just raise your hand. You're saying, Lord, I want to be ready. Come with me. Heavenly Father, we want to become a committee of one. We don't want to look for votes. We don't want to trust what anyone says, whether a teacher or a theology leader or pastor or anyone, not even ourselves. We want to give up our own thoughts where there's a way that seems right into a man. But the of our the ways of death, we want to trust only Jesus. Please help us this week to study like we've never studied before, to pray like we've never studied before, and then to make choices that will produce changes by your grace. Mm -hmm to live according to the Bible standard. We thank you, Lord. Be with every lifted hand. Keep us and bring us back next week, we pray. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.